Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses and today we're talking about bike gear. Helmets, jackets, trousers, gloves and boots. If you ask any biker what's the most important thing when they're buying equipment, chances are they'll say safety. But is that necessarily true? Now, if you're riding a sports bike, would you necessarily wear an open face helmet? Or if you're riding an old vintage bike, would you necessarily wear a full face helmet? So that brings us down to the safety of the helmet you are comfortable wearing. Typically, there are two standards to look for. First, you've got the British standard mark, and that is indicated like so. Or more common these days, you have the DOT mark or the European standard mark. And here in the UK, what you wanna be looking for ideally is this, 2205, and that indicates that it is of European standard and in the UK that's pretty much what you're looking for these days. It's either going to be here on the back of the helmet or quite often printed on the sticker on the visor but then it'll be on the back as well because let's be honest when you're riding that comes off. And one of the big things that people seem to talk about is that you only get what you pay for but is that relevant in today's helmet market or clothing market. Do you have to spend £500 on a helmet to get one that is £500 worth of safe? Or is a £60, £70 helmet just going to do the same job? Personally, I think these days a helmet's price is based on the reputation or how long the company's been around. Therefore, a shark helmet or an AGV helmet is probably going to be more expensive than your likes of GSB and MT. But that doesn't necessarily mean they are that much better, if they're any better at all. Now we'll get on to different styles of helmets in a second, but what you want to be looking for is as long as the helmet is European standard for the UK or Europe, you're going to be okay. And there's little indications on the straps or on the helmet that will give you an idea as to where that helmet came from. The letter E, often found on the strap, indicates that this helmet has received a European ECE standard regulation authority pass certificate. The number next to it represents which country it received that regulation from. So for example, this one is E1, which means it's received its standard certification from Germany. This shark helmet has E2 on it, which means it's received its European standard mark from France. 
this HJC helmet also E1, which means it's from Germany. And this retro style open face Viper helmet has received its mark from E9, and E9 is Spain. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that all the same make helmets receive their certification from the same country, because my helmet is also a Viper, and that one has an E1 mark, which means it's received its certification from Germany. So that brings us on to clasp types. Now traditionally there are three different clasp types. On this helmet here, you have a quick release. So basically this goes into here, like so, and it's nice and secure. And then all you do is pull this tag and it releases. And this is the type I have on my helmet. I found that very easy to use and very quick. Now this helmet has a more traditional clasp. So you've got two rings. The strap goes through the two rings and then back through the first ring, making it nice and secure. Some people argue that that's a more secure clasp, which it probably is. But for me, it's a bit more awkward because with the helmet on, you have to go through and then find one and back through like so. Now it's not overly difficult, but it can be a lot more time consuming. And if you're not great with your fingers, getting it off again can be a bit of a pain. It's not too bad, I suppose. And then you have the more traditional car seat belt type. Now this is like a very mini seat belt and that just clips in there like so. And then quick push of that button and it releases. Now to me, that doesn't seem quite as safe because it's just a tiny bit of plastic that's holding that in. And I don't know if that's gonna do the job. It seems okay, you know, it's definitely strong. But if you slam your face on the floor, is that gonna come undone? I don't know, perhaps if anybody has this style and has an experience to say, then please let us know. But uh, I don't know, I haven't really seen that too often. But uh, again, the Viper helmet, different class. Well, my Viper helmet, I have the quick release one. And the same thing could be argued about that. Is that gonna come undone in an accident? So basically, is this old traditional clasp style the safest? We don't know really until we completely test them. And if you're willing to do that, let us know. But I wouldn't. So that brings us on to construction. Well, with some of these open face helmets, quite often when you push the sides here, they're very flexible as you can see here. But on this helmet, the pads are stuck down. On mine, these can be unclipped and removed. So you can see just how thick it is behind there. All these helmets are polycarbonate. You can, of course, get fiberglass helmets, but then you're talking four, 500 pounds. And unless you're into, you know, 200 mile an hour superbikes or speedboat racing or anything like that, or track days, then it's probably not necessary. What do you think? What are your thoughts on this? So let me talk for a second about my helmet and why I chose it. Now, traditionally, I've always gone for a full face helmet, but that's because of the style of bike I was riding. Now, I have a cafe racer scrambler style bike now, and I don't think a full face helmet looks quite right on that bike. So I went for an open face helmet. Now I know a lot of people say that open face helmets are very dangerous because when you fall off a bike, chances are you're gonna land on your chin and smash your face open. That may be the case, but most people seem to think style is more important than safety. They think, yes, safety, but their heart goes with style. And I know you're probably guilty of that too. If you're not, then great, you're the safest person in the world. But if you're not, then you're human like the rest of us. Now, I chose this helmet mostly because it's black with orange stripes and it matches my car. But I also went for it because 
when you remove these sides, you can feel that this is thick plastic or thick polycarbonate. It's not flimsy and cheap like some of the helmets you see on open face. When you clip these back in very easily, you can see it's quite strong. It doesn't flex about like some helmets do. It's actually pretty sturdy. I was a little bit worried about the open face thing, mostly because I didn't want flies in my face, so I went for this. The mask. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's a paintball mask. Well, close, but it's not. It's actually designed for open face helmets, made by Viper, and it fits nicely snug like so. It offers some extra protection. Of course, it's not as strong as a full face helmet, but it does offer some protection. And when on, I think it looks quite cool. And then you can lift it up to have a conversation and bring it down again when you're ready to ride. Now, of course, with these kind of things, you do have to suffer a little bit with wind noise, but I've got a uh, Bluetooth microphone on this and I can quite happily have a conversation with someone on the phone or through a Bluetooth headset and I can still hear what they're saying. The microphone is here and the earpieces slot inside. Now this again is another good thing about this particular helmet because you can take off these sides like so and stick on the earpiece for the headset. Now that, for a second, brings me neatly onto this actual Bluetooth unit. Now this is something I bought for £59 for two from a popular auction site. And it clips on the side here. Microphone sits neatly in the side here with the two ear pieces. So it's in both ears. Microphone is very flexible. And even with the open face mic, I get no wind noise distortion through this microphone. And then you can connect up to six riders, apparently, which we haven't done yet. And it's very clear. Now, you can spend about £250 on these units, but this is fantastic. And it has a 1.2 kilometer Bluetooth range and it connects automatically to your smartphone. So you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds to get something that does the job properly. Just as a little added extra touch, I took off the peak because I didn't think it went with the style of bike, so I got rid of that. And that did leave these chrome looking button poppers and that did not really go very well with my bike. So again, back onto this popular auction website and I bought myself some brass popper covers just to go over the top here. Now that brings me on to helmet prices and sizes. Now I paid 55 pounds for my helmet and that is not a lot of money at all. And I am really impressed with the quality of the helmet. But when it comes to size, you need to try the helmet on. Now I know a lot of people are saying that oh, I could probably get that cheaper online. And maybe you could, but there's two problems with that. One, you don't know whether the parcel man's gonna be launching it into the back of the van before it arrives on your front door. And two, you might not be getting the size you think you are. For example, this MT helmet is a large and it states 59 to 60 head size. Now I am typically 58 to 59, but this, It's far too tight. Now, it's supposed to nip your cheeks, but not poke you in the eyes and squash your face completely. So this is obviously the wrong size for me. As you can see. Moving on to this HJC, this is also a large and also a 59 to 60. And that, slots on my head a lot easier and certainly feels a lot more comfortable. Now going to an open face helmet, again this is a large and it's a 60 but oh, it's a lot tougher to put on and it feels too tight on my cheekbones and it's dragging my skin down. This is the Viper 
open face helmet. And my Viper open face helmet is an extra large, a 61 to 62. Now when I looked at that, I thought there's no way that's gonna fit me, but it fits me perfectly. And it's all down to pad sizes and the shape of the helmet. All helmets are different sizes and all the pads are different shapes and different thickness. So you need to get down to the place and stick the helmet on your head to find out if it actually fits you properly or not. So in general, sorry, one second. So in general, Sorry, one second. So in general, I don't think it really matters too much on the price you pay for a helmet. Of course, if you're gonna spend 500 pound and get something like a carbon fiber helmet, you are going to get something that's a much better quality. But when it comes to a typical helmet, 55, 60 pounds, you're probably gonna get something pretty decent for your money. and definitely safe as long as it's got that European standard mark or the DOT mark on it I don't think you've got much of a problem where you get the problems is when you get the cheap import ones that's very flexible which is why I say get down to the place try the helmet on feel the helmet feel how heavy it is feel how sturdy it is stick it on your head before you buy of course there has been some debate as to whether flip front helmets are indeed safe. Now, of course, they're going to be safer than an open face helmet if you land chin first, but is it gonna be as secure as a full face helmet? Is this little plastic clip and the little clip in the side enough to stop the front flipping up if you land chin first? I don't know, and I'd like to hear your views on that because I'm not sure whether it's adequate. I think, again, it's down to convenience and style. If you're on a touring type bike and you wanna have lots of conversations or stop for a coffee or stop for a cigarette, whatever you want to do, this is more convenient than a full face helmet. But is it safer? You tell me. Prices these days seem to be down to partly to do with the manufacturer. Of course, your Sharks, your Bells, your AGVs, your, things like that. You're all going to be a lot more expensive in your Simpson helmets and things like that. But when it comes to these budget brands, as long as, like I say, they've got the standard marks, they've got the DOT registration, or they've got the ECE, or the British kite mark, I don't think you've got a problem. And then, Prices seem to be around sort of 55, 60 pounds. You get some nice designs, but prices also seem to depend on the style of helmet you have. Now this VCAN helmet is 55 pounds, but it's a standard looking black helmet. This one, however, has lots more features going on, a nicer design, 75 pounds. So I think you're paying not necessarily for a better quality or a better structure, but the design. And that seems to be what most of manufacturers are doing. The price depends on what the helmet looks like rather than is it safe or not. When it comes to jackets, chances are you're not really gonna get much difference. As long as you've got padding in the right places, again, you're not really gonna have much of a problem. Now, some people go for leather, but I think leather is being phased out. I've never really been a leather person. I've never been into leather jackets. Obviously when I'm 16 and you have like a leather rocker jacket, that was different, that was a long time ago. But when it comes to bikes, leather I think is on its way out. I may be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I think these Gore-Tex-y feel ones are what people tend to be choosing these days. Certainly what I went for. Now, the idea with these jackets is to look for the padding in the right places, like I say. So for jackets like this, okay, they have the extra flap over to keep the wind out, but more often than not, they've got the padding inside. So this is for winter time, and then you can take that out separately and get rid of it for the summertime. Padding, elbows, shoulders, and back and that's usually where the padding is. Now there's not really much to say about it. I 
went for this one because it's a better style for my bike. Now these Oxford jackets, very good brand, you're gonna be paying around 80 to 90 pounds, maybe even a little bit less for. I paid 129 for my Viper jacket. And it's because it suits the style of bike better. Now I've got very hard elbow padding. And when I say elbow, it goes right down to the wrist, all the way around the elbow to here. It's a molded pad, so it moves with your arm. I've also got shoulder pads, again, right up here, next to the collarbone, all the way down to the halfway down your arm. And you get a big one in the back. Again, this has the removable insert. You can take that out when you're riding in the summer. And you've got this nice shape, quite thick actual pad in the back. It's not Kevlar and you don't have a hump on your back, that's more for the superbike riders, and what you often find in leather gear. But this, I think, is perfectly adequate. Again, I'm using that word adequate. Not adequate, but it's gonna do the job. Now this jacket is slightly more expensive, but again, you're paying for style, and this was 129 pounds. Now, of course, if leather or polyester is not your thing, you could always go for a hoodie. Except this hoodie is 100 pounds. Why? because this one comes with the back protection, the elbow protection, and the shoulder pads. So next that brings us on to trousers. Now you can go for various different styles, of course. If you've got the Gore-Tex-y style and the right kind of bike, you can go for these waterproof Gore-Tex type trousers. Uh, these tend to have padding in the knees and quite often in the hip or on the backside expect to pay around 50 to 80 or 90 pounds for these. If that's not your style, you can go for a jean style. Now you've got things like this made by Buffalo. Now these are just a traditional jean texture inside, but they've got extra padding for the knees. And these pads are quite thick and hefty and they go in your knees and bend obviously when you're riding. Now these are 89.99 but you can get them elsewhere if you shop around. Now, I went to Aldi of all places and I found these. Now these are again, jeans and they look like jeans from the outside and everyone thinks they are jeans. But on the inside, they've got a very thick, warm lining, which of course can get hot in the summer, but you know, but they've also got the padding. Now. You've got knee padding, like so, and thigh padding, like so. And they sit inside these little pockets on the jeans. And I paid 39.99 for these. So you can get them cheaper if you shop around. Of course, there can be an issue with that in Aldi, I can't try them on to make sure they fit properly. So I had to guess that they're the right size. And these ones are, a little bit big for me but as long as I've got the belt on they're all right whereas you've come to a place like this you can try them on and make sure you're getting the right kind of trousers that fit you and look right too so that brings us on to boots well again there's various different sizes depending on the type of style of rider you are or what you're into now I used to have a sports bike and I went for something like this now, these are typically around 125, 130 pounds, but you can get them from around 60, 70 pounds, albeit not as good as Diora. Of course, now I have a cafe racer style bike. I went for a different style of boot for two reasons. One, because these would not look good with that style of bike. And two, with my jean, armored jeans, it didn't really suit. So I went for an ankle boot like this. Now this still offers the protection down the side and the protection at the back here and in the ankles, both sides. And these were 45 pounds. But again, that's only if you like this style. Now, I am considering changing because of the color of my bike for something like this. Now this is still a bike boot, but it doesn't look like one. It still has the protection at the front here protection at the back and the ankle protection in here 
and these come out at £79. Now I think for a boot that looks this good and does the job properly is not anything to complain about at all and this is what I'm going for next. If brown's not your colour you could also get something like this, it looks like a basketball boot, nothing special. But again, protection, protection, protection and again £79. That's a fantastic price for a boot that is cool and functional. And not all boots are masculine, you also get feminine style boots. Again, this is not for me, might be for you, I don't know. But if you're a woman, they're perfect. Again, all the protection for a price of £79. And finally we have gloves. Now these usually come in one style. Or do they? Well, no they don't. These are what I went for because they've got the Kevlar knuckle protection and a lot of these do. But mine have also got the inside of your palm protection here too. Again, these are from Aldi, 10 quid. Typically expect to pay between 20 pounds and 40 pounds for a pair of gloves. And not all of them have the protection. Now these ones are more designed for the older style bike. They look quite cool, but they offer very little protection. And I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable riding with something like this, because let's be honest, if you're gonna fall off the bike, the knuckles are the first thing that's gonna hit the floor. So you can go for something like this, still very similar, but the Kevlar knuckle protection. And these ones come in at $29.99, not a bad price. So when it comes to safety, is there a budget? Well, I actually think there is. You don't need to spend thousands of pounds to be safe. All you need to make sure you do is get down to the dealer, try on the helmets, try on the jackets, try on the trousers, try on the boots, try on the gloves, check the quality of things, make sure that what you're buying is proper stuff. Okay, internet can be cheaper, but you can't check quality on the internet. You can't feel what the padding is like. You can't feel whether it fits properly, especially when it comes to helmets. So all you need to do is use your common sense. Get down there and see for yourself. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for watching. Please tune in next time when we'll be back with 125 scooters and an entire array of them. Until then, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video, and we will see you very soon. But until then, remember, drive and ride safe, but have fun. Bye-bye.